Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America located in Evansville, Indiana. Today is Wednesday, um, January 6th, 2021. This is edition number 58. It's great to have you here as we continue working our way through season two of the Morning Devotional. We are currently looking at the Sermon on the Mount and we're back after a break that I have taken uh, returning from vacation and I'm thankful for the time away but now uh, eager and ready and eager to uh, dig back into these matters that we've been considering for many many uh, weeks uh, already. This morning we're going to be looking at just one verse, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. But let's pray together first and then we will take up this verse briefly this morning. Let's pray. Father, as we come before your word this morning, we are thankful for it. We are thankful that you have preserved it and that you have brought it to us in our own language. We thank you that it is a light to our path and that it gives us guidance and direction as to what you demand of us. We pray that you'd help us, that you would be gracious to us, and that you would sustain and keep your people. Uh, we pray for your spirit to teach us. Even this morning, we ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, this morning, we are looking at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, which reads, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Here we have in this verse uh, what is uh, uh, otherwise known as the, uh, the golden uh, rule. It's often called this. This principle was, uh, according to one commentator, this principle was stated by a number of ancient thinkers as do not do to others what you do not want done to you. But here Jesus puts a positive twist on it, a positive obligation. Here it appears after the discussion of God's goodness and willingness to give, and we noted from our last edition, uh, to give uh, to us uh, His Holy uh, Spirit. But we, as God's people, we should be ones who uh, should give to others um, what we would desire others to give to us. Now, this whole issue is not new uh, to uh, Scripture. Jesus is not, as it were, inventing some new principle or some new Christian ethic that uh, we uh, need to follow, but he is indeed piggybacking very much on the whole summation of what the moral law itself demands of us. And so we turn over to Matthew chapter 22 and verse 40. We read, these words on these two commandments to depend all the law and the prophets. Now the context is important. It begins um, in verse 34, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so when Jesus says in verse 12 of Matthew 7 that this is the law and the prophets, he is describing the, the, that full arching summation of the moral law as given. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as we indeed love even our Selves. And so, especially as followers of Christ and disciples of Christ, we should labor in our day uh, to treat other people in such a way that we would want them to treat us. We don't respond in kind uh, to evil done to us. We do not uh, give back to poor behavior, poor treatment from others, uh, the very treatment that they offer to us. Indeed, no, we treat them in a way that we would have liked to have been treated or how we would indeed like to be treated. There are so many different applications to this very 
principle, otherwise known as the golden rule, that we don't have enough time even to deal with many of them. But let me just, you know, let me just use a few categories that may help us uh, flesh this out a little bit further. Uh, let's begin just with our homes and our families. Uh, you know, husbands and wives, they sometimes disagree. It happens even in the best of marriages. Disagreements happen and they occur. And sometimes things get said that aren't very pleasing and aren't very nice. So they're not, certainly not very kind. But what would happen in that relationship if, in fact, the husband said something to the wife that wasn't very kind, it wasn't very nice, and the wife took advantage of that situation and she retorted in kind, it would just escalate and get all the worse. Feelings would end up hurt, hardship, har uh, uh, hard attitudes, bad attitudes would be fostered between the parties involved, and no resolution would really come. It's, it would require, and it does require, someone uh, to remember the words of Christ, that we ought to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, that we should do unto others as we would have them do unto us, to diffuse the situation and not respond in kind against the spouse, and especially the offending uh, spouse. Perhaps with children, oftentimes we see these squabbles break out between children over the most inane of issues, my toy, my piece of clothing, my room, my food, you name it, um, and we see them squabble and they continually escalate, they continually hurt one another, and um, they do not exercise this principle that we ought to be teaching our children in our homes about loving others and to do good to others, even if they wrong us, even if they treat us unkindly. Uh, on the job, we, we note this uh, quite often with uh, fellow employees who maybe do not uh, behave in such an honorable way towards us. Our bosses perhaps are harsh or uh, unkind, and, and we are not to respond in such a way. We are not to respond in the same manner in which the other individual acted. Uh, the same is true in the ministry, of course, as a pastor of a church and Oftentimes, sometimes, uh, things will happen within the confines of the church in which um, grace demands that uh, uh, I overlook certain things that happen. Oftentimes, people don't even know uh, what, they've just that, 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 what they just did, but be that as it may, um, I don't have license as a Christian and as a pastor to uh, offer the same kind of treatment that was offered to me. This will happen. It does happen. Uh, we are sinful people, and we will rub each other the wrong way at times. Jesus is de determined to teach his people how to respond and deal with circumstances uh, as we interact as fallen creatures with one another. And so whether it's from the world who acts poorly and sinfully or whether it's from our brothers and sisters who may act in, such, in much the same way, we want to always remember that we want to give as much grace as we know how. We want to extend as much charity to our brothers and sisters. We want to respond not as they acted, but as the Lord Jesus Christ would have us respond. Now, this is not to say that you have to be a doormat. Jesus certainly acted this out perfectly. He kept the law in a total fulfillment in thought, word, and deed. He loved God and he loved others in ways that we can't in this life because of our indwelling sin. But, and he was mistreated badly by the scribes, the Pharisees, and other people. And how did he respond? Well, he didn't necessarily become a doormat and just let them do it necessarily, but he did respond always uh, in a way that he would like to be responded, uh, how he would like to be treated. He would take the Pharisees to task for their poor theology, their poor teaching, their poor doctrine, but he was gentle, meek, and lowly of heart in his treatment of other people. What often gets in the way, of course, in this whole equation, as someone comes in your office or your house or perhaps it's your spouse, whatever it may be, oftentimes what precipitates, what causes the harshness to go back and forth between two parties is simply pride. We want our way. We want it right now. We think they're wrong, and so we now have license to be wrong like they're wrong. And Well, you've heard the expression, two wrongs don't make a right. And so it takes a godly individual and a mature individual to, to step back away from the situation and think about this golden rule that Jesus gives here 
in these verses to uh, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Whether they deserve it or not, whether you think they deserve it or not, is all really immaterial. As a follower of Christ, we must be people that extend the maximum grace and the maximum charity and the maximum love uh, to others in our dealings with one another. Well, I trust these times are a blessing for you. I hope they are. And if you would like to contact me, you may do so. That information is there before you on the screen. And so until tomorrow, when we consider verses 13 and 14 of Matthew chapter 7, I trust the Lord to help you. He'll give you grace to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, thus glorifying your God in heaven. God bless.